So you're looking for a dish that is heartwarming for your soul and your stomach. It got my folks through the depression, the dust bowl. What is it? Chicken and dumplings. You're gonna want some of these. Welcome to some cowboy cooking. My name is Kent Rollins and what do we do here? A whole lot of grilling, Dutch oven cooking, something in a stew pot, get it good and hot. Good old southern classic recipe called what? Chicken and dumplings. Yeah, y'all been asking for it and we are going to deliver. Now before we go any further, I just want you to know anything that we used in this video or the recipe, all of that stuff will be listed in the description right below the video. So chicken and dumpling is an old comfort recipe that goes way back during the depression. I mean, they'd go down there to a chicken house and grab them one up, maybe have a little milk to put in there, boil it up there. Hey, it was good eating. Got them through a lot of tough times. Chicken and dumplings to me is a recipe that when you sit down with family, it's something special. And that's what we're going to create today is a very special chicken and dumpling recipe made out of old traditional dumplings. Now there was all kinds of things you could use for dumplings and I've used canned biscuits. I've used tortillas that you just cut up a little. Yeah, the ones right out of the sack, flour tortillas. Just throw them in there. Pinch off some of them canned biscuits if you won't do that. I used Pillsbury pie crust. Just cut them in little pieces, folded them over where there's a little thicker, throw them in there. Today we're using just an old traditional dumpling recipe. Been in my family for a long time it has. So without any further ado, let's get to this deal. Now I had four seven ounce chicken breasts. As y'all saw before, I done dumped them in me some hot water, added a little salt to it, boiled them up till they get good and tender. We used to use a whole chicken and do that, but I do love me a chicken breast and that way I ain't got to bone nothing out when I'm finished. See folks, this thing is just falls apart for tender. So it is ready to go. It is cooled off. We're going to cut it up into some bite sized pieces. And you might be thinking, my God, where did he get that hash knife? Was that Paul Bunyan's? I like to get a hold to me some chicken when I reach down in them, they're getting me a bite. Now you can see folks, when I say bite size, that's pretty well what I'm talking about for me because some of this is going to flake off as it continues to... Some of this is going to flake and fall off in the bottom of that pot as we're cooking, but you're going to have a still a good chunk full out of there. So let me light this burner back, get things back to going. And whoa, did y'all see that that just snuck up here? Remember quality control, folks. Gotta know. Will it work? So to that little saucepan over that we got about six cups of that chicken broth left in there, we're going to add a half a stick of unsalted butter, cream, a little bit of salt and pepper to taste, dump that chicken back in there, give it a good old stirring, cover it, and we're going to let it cook 20 to 25 minutes. And while that is cooking, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make us some dumplings. We'll start out with two cups of all-purpose fire. F fire? No, flour. And people are always laughing at me. It's not flour, Kent, it's flour. Well, here it is flour, I promise. Put us in about three teaspoons full of baking powder, because I want to give them a little jump, I do. Three tablespoons of oil after I stir these dry ingredients good. And some of them blowing away, as you can see. So we've got a little wind today. Oh, we got more than a little wind. We have skirt alert day, Shen. And for you folks that don't know skirt alert, y'all ain't lived out here in western Oklahoma or the Texas Panhandle because it'll blow that skirt plumb over the top of your head. Now, you could have a weather rock. How many of y'all got one of them? You know it's one of them rocks you tie on a string. You hang it from something. If the rock is sitting here like this not moving, ain't nothing happening. Good day. If the rock is wet, what's it doing? Raining. If the rock is sticking straight out, that wind is blowing. So and now we're going to add about three-fourths of a cup of buttermilk. So we're going to mix this around till we can get it to where it begins to come together, and then we'll get our hands on it. And you may have to add just a little more liquid, but we'll get to that point in just a minute and find out. And we're going to go to try to making this into a ball. It's more consistency of a pie crust than it is a biscuit dough. As you can see, that's what I would call a little tough for a biscuit, but it's gonna make really good dumplings. Well, folks, we got her to that point to where it's in a ball. If, in this Oklahoma breeze, can we keep some of this flour on there? You want a little too, Shen? 
So we're going to put it there and we're going to knead it for just a little bit, four or five times, and we're going to call that a done deal right there. Now I like to just sort of try to get it to where it's sort of long. It's easier for me to pinch it off that way. And Mama used to say you get a tablespoon at a time. But I just sort of like to just maybe like pull them off like that. They all come in all sizes, so whatever size you want to make them for, how many does it make? The right amount. Now, I've known folks that want to roll them up and put them in there. Mama said you didn't, and I'm going to go with what she taught me. So I'm just going to leave them just like this. We got them all pinched off we do into little dumpling deals. We got to make sure that that is boiling back over here on our chicken stock, and I'm going to give it one more stir before we go to dropping these dumplings over in there. And you may hear the wind blowing on that burner, so here's contestant number one. Down in there he go. Here come the next one. This is pretty good when you ain't even got to see them. If you drop one in the wrong spot, I guarantee you the beagle will catch it. I like to put about half of them in there and then we're going to give it a stir. So we're going to call that half right there and then I'm going to stir it up and I'm going to put the rest in there and we're going to let them just simmer there along for about five to six minutes. Now folks, I'm going to tell you, I have had folks try to sneak in my kitchen and eat them that way right out of the pot, but I like to thicken this deal a little. Now you can do it with flour, my mother did, but I like to use cornstarch, a cup full of water and two tablespoons of cornstarch, cool water. We stirred that up well, folks. You want to make sure now that this is brought back to a good rolling bowl, and we're going to pour this gradually in and stir it as our thickening agent. Continue to stir, folks, and it ain't going to take long. We're about there, two to three minutes at the most, but usually about two minutes, and you got you some thicker sauce for that chicken and dumplings, and we are nearly there. Well, folks, it is a done deal, and I wish y'all was here because I know my mother and my grandma would, pre would be proud of this old traditional southern dish. Now, I know I hear some of you out there saying, you didn't put no carrots in it, no celery, no onion. It's called chicken and dumplings. It wasn't called chicken and carrots and onions and peas and all this I'm going to leave it the old traditional method, chicken and dumplings. And what have I got here? A serving apparatus. Now, I'm going to reach down in there. Look at there, chicken and dumplings in every scoop. I need me one more of them dumplings to even the deal out. Throwing it, y'all see me on that macaroni and cheese like to burn the top out of me. Pardon me, Chamber, I gotta do a happy dance. <clears throat> thank you, Mama, thank you, Jesus. That takes me back to when I was a child and I do love them old, what I'd call really traditional old, sort of a pie crust dumpling. Pardon me while I have another. I'm gonna cut one of these dumplings so y'all can see that in there. Now that is cooked to perfection, just a little bit of doughy right there in the middle. That's the way a dumpling is supposed to be. Light, whoo. Mm. Folks, this is one of them flavorful meals that will stay with you forever all day long. And I guarantee you double the recipe because you're going to get addicted to this stuff. You're going to sit down and just do, do one of them Jethro Bodine deals where you just take it up here and <laughs> drink the whole thing. So folks, we hope you enjoyed this today as we come down here on a very windy day in Southwest Oklahoma, which is very common here. We hope that you learned something, create some brand new memories or relive some from the past. But we just wanted to thank you so much and enjoy it. Remember, all the information will be below. And I want to thank all our service men and women and all those who have served for keeping that old flag of flying over the top of that wagon every day. We're going to have it there. But I want to thank you all so much for watching. Be sure and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you down the dumpling trail.